All right, guys, so I'm outside of a 2019 Honda CRV. This is the EX model. So this is going to be cloth interior, but it's going to be the highest end of the cloth. So the first thing I want to start you off on is just the key right here. Uh, so I'll show you a couple buttons. I've got a lock button and unlock button. This is your remote start button. So that car comes standard with it. To use it, you always want to press the lock button first, and then you'll press and hold the remote start button. Uh, after a couple seconds, if you're in front of the car, you'll see it flash, and then it'll kick on like it just did. Uh, I could run it for an additional 10 if I hit it again. So that same pattern. If I wanted to turn the car off though, I could press the unlock button and the remote start button to turn it off. Now this will unlock your trunk. It's not a power tailgate. You'd have to go up to the EXL model. Then I can set off uh, the alarm if I needed to find the car. So that's just a little bit about the key as far as that goes. And there's a little switch back here. I can slide and slide this physical key out and you can see there's a key inside. So the piece that has to be in it to start versus just opening the door if I kill the locks. So that's how this works. So let's walk around the car and go over a couple things. I'm gonna start you at the back of the car. Uh, and just explain a couple features there. So it has keyless entry, so when I walk up, I can use my hand and just touch the quick release pad and open it, right? So I can pop this sucker open. Uh, so you can see what's going on from there. So in the back here, you'll notice I've got a nice good amount of storage. You can see I have a lip set up right here in my cloth formats, so let me get those out of the way. The first thing I wanna show you about that lip is that I can actually make this 100% flat. So I can set that up to be 100% flat if I needed to, so if I needed to fold the seats down. Now to fold the seats down, I've got handles on both sides. So I have a 60-40 split that I can throw them down for. And you can see it's getting caught on the seat belt, but it'll slowly throw down all the way. And I can do it from here too, which I don't know how far these seats are back, so it may or may not let me get them all the way down. And then this piece, the uh, privacy deal is, is removable. So that's what this is. Uh, so underneath here, is going to be my spare. So you can see everything that's going on right there. It is a full size spare, or should, should I say full diameter. So not full width, but it is full height. Uh, so that's what's going on from that standpoint. Right, so one side is down. So this way you can get an idea for how much space you're working with. So if camping went awry, you could fit a twin, maybe a full uh, size air mattress back there if you needed to sleep in it. So that's just what's going on from that standpoint. So let me throw these mats back in and we'll walk around to those that second row of seats. All right. So at the second row of seats, oh, helps if I unlock it, I guess, since I remote started it. So let's unlock the door. All right, so I've got my seats down. Let me flip them up so you can get an idea for what's going on back here. So this is a white diamond pearl uh, with the ivory interior. Ivory is kind of uh, tricky when they call it that. It's really a tan interior, I feel like is the better explanation of this. Uh, but this is what you're going. You'll see the uh, black on the tops of all the door seals. That's to prevent glare. And then your floorboards are always that dark uh, grayish charcoal too, just to uh, prevent dirt from getting on anything. I do have air vents back here. I do have U two USBs back here too. They're both 2.5 amps. So that's what's going on. And then I've got cup holders in the, uh, in the doors if you care about a lot of cup holders. So quick stop on the uh, sticker. I don't know if you'll be able to see it. Ah, I got a little big there, uh, but we'll keep moving along. This car does have the 1.5 liter turboed engine in it. Uh, so it has a CVT transmission. I get asked that. I don't go over that as much. I go over more of the interior of the car, but just so you know, it does have that four disc brakes, six airbags, uh, and some of the other safety features I'll go over here in just a second. Uh, it gets 28 in the city, 34 on the highway combined. You're looking at 30. So just so you have a general rundown of that stuff. So I will point out <clears throat> It is a powered seat, so I've got your front, your back. I can lift up under my legs if I need to. Uh, I can take the back rest up, and then I've got lower lumbar support right here. So that's what's going on for the seat. Now let's hop on in. So since I remote started it, I'm gonna point out a couple things. You'll notice it is still asking me uh, to touch the uh, foot on the brake and press the start button, because you'll notice none of my electronics are on. Uh, and that's, so there's my notice right there, you'll see. Uh, and that's just part of the safety features of using a remote start. Once I tap it, now everything else is gonna kick on in the car. So that's just how remote start works in this vehicle. So let's start over on the left side and we'll go through some things. So on the left side, you've got your window controls, your auto up down on your driver and passenger side, my window locks, my door locks, and then my mirror control. So left, right, adjust on the tab. So pretty self-explanatory there. Now down here on the dash, a couple features. So I'm gonna turn this one on so you can see the LED. That's a road departure mitigation. So if I start to drive off the shoulder of the road, uh, it'll give me an audible alert and shake the wheel. So that's what this feature is. And anytime you turn this on and off, you'll see this pop on up here. So there you go. Uh, below that is collision mitigation braking. This is always on unless you turn it off. And what this is, is if I go, uh, if I start to looking like I'm gonna rear end somebody, first it'll audibly alert me and, and alert me in the dash. And then if I don't apply my brakes, it'll actually apply the brakes to prevent the accident. So that's what this feature is. It's always on, I have to press and hold this to turn off for about five seconds. So just to show you, now it's off and you'll see that alert come up. So it takes a while. You can't just bump this and accidentally turn it off. <clears throat> Same with vehicle stability assist. This works with your traction control. So in the event that you go into a skid, it'll transfer power to whichever wheel is getting better traction to help correct. So this is always on and running too. Only time you want to turn this off is maybe if you were stuck in the mud and wanted to spin your tires while you were trying to push yourself out or something, that would be when you would turn this off. 
So moving up to the steering wheel. On your left side right here, the first thing I'm gonna point out is your Bluetooth control. So to answer a call, to hang up a call, to use voice command. This voice command button will also work if you have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto running, which I'll go over here in a second, but you'll be able to press and hold until you hear the beep for like Siri, or press when you have it already up and you'll go for Google. Uh, and that way you could ask, you know, hey, give me directions to this, send a text to this person, that sort of thing. So this is gonna be kind of a dual purpose button right here. Now my I button right here is the information screen right here. So if I press it, you're gonna see it pull up and I can keep pressing it and toggling through screen. So things like oil life and to select one, all I'm doing is selecting the enter button right here. Uh, so if I wanna see what my oil life is, if I wanna jump over and see what auto uh, audio I'm listening to, which it's currently not turned on, but let's kick, kick it on real quick so you can see. Uh, so some hip hop off of the uh, satellite radio. Uh, Bluetooth, if I wanted to jump over to that, if I was looking for a person or anything like that, I could scroll through some of that stuff there. And then if I want to switch over to kilometers uh, instead of miles per hour. And then this is my trip info. So range is how many miles I have on this tank of gas. Below that is my average, oops, my average uh, fuel usage um, per gallon. And then you can see down at the very bottom, I have uh, how many miles are on this car? 11, and then the uh, current uh, temperature, 74 degrees here in Austin, Texas. So that's what's going on from that standpoint, right? Uh, over on the right side of the steering wheel, there's gonna be a few buttons. So the first button I wanna talk about is the main button. If the main button is on, you'll see ACC and LKS uh, on. And if you get out of the car and turn the car off and then turn it back on, this button will remain on. ACC stands for Adaptive Cruise Control. LKS stands for Lane Keep Assist. So what those two are is, uh, the first we're gonna go over is a Lane Keep Assist, because that's the easiest one to show you. And that's right here. If I press this button right here, which is down here in the bottom corner, you're gonna see these dotted lines come on, so that's what's flashing at you right now. When I'm going over 45 miles an hour, it is gonna use a camera, and that camera is actually in this black box right up here to detect the lines on the road, uh, and those will fill in solid on the screen. When they're filled in solid, it means it's now reading the road. So if I drift a little bit to my left or my right out of my lane, it'll correct for me and keep me centered in my lane. So this is just to prevent you in case you spill your coffee, your kids distract you, your dog jumps on you, fill in the blank with what the distraction could be, right? So that's how this function works. And you can turn it on and off, all these safety features you can, so that's kind of the cool part. Now the, deck, the next one is adaptive cruise control. So how that one works is once I would get up to the speed I wanna go, I'd press set. From there, it would then show me where it says ACC off. It would show me the speed I've set. From there, I can select the distance it's gonna keep between me and the car uh, in front of me using this button. So when I press this, you'll see more boxes means more space, right? So less boxes, less space. So if I set it to 65 and the guy in front of me slows down to 50, my car will keep whatever designated space that I have picked between us and it'll slow my car down. And then when I get out from behind him or he speeds back up, my car will speed back up to this, the uh, designated speed I've picked. So that's just how this works. Now let's say you're going, hey, I don't want all that. I just want regular cruise control, no big deal. Just press and hold this button and then it'll say cruise mode. Now it's just set up to use it as standard cruise control. When I wanna get up to speed, I press set. I can cancel and I can resume and then I can up and down the speed. You see the plus and the minus. So you can do this two different ways, right? <coughs> Excuse me. So just so you know how that works, I'm gonna turn that back on. Okay, so moving over to the left stock, I'll show you, you do have auto on off headlights. So to turn them on, auto right there, and that way they'll turn on and off by themselves and you don't have to mess with anything. Your fog light controls are down here, so you can see they're off with the hash mark right now. If I move them to on, now they're on. So that's how that works. Uh, moving over to the other stock is gonna be my windshield wiper controls. So for here, if I pull them down, it's gonna do the fronts. If I wanna do the backs, I would uh, control off the tip of the blinker stock right here. And then you can see they are intermittent, so I can affect the speed exactly how much I want. So that's just how those work. So that's a quick rundown of those two things. Now moving over to the touch screen, the first thing I'm gonna show you is the backup camera, mainly because I always forget to show people this. So if I throw the car in reverse, it's gonna pull up my backup camera. Now the first thing I'm gonna show you is you have three different views for this backup camera. Uh, so when people ask, hey, does it have parking sensor standard? No, it doesn't, but you might not need them after seeing this. So I've got wide angle right here, so I can see about 170 degrees. Uh, and related to that, I also have cross traffic monitoring, which is right over here. In the event that somebody is coming from my left or right, it'll give me an audible alert and show me arrows from whichever side they're coming. So you have sensors on the back of the car, but they're not the parking sensors that you're thinking. So I wanna switch over to just a regular view. So you can see I'm losing out on a little bit of the left and right. And then this one is aimed straight down. So the edge of my bumper is right along the seam. That dotted line is where the hatch opens to. And this solid line would be about two and a half, three feet from my car, so if I'm parallel parking. So I'm about that perfect distance from you can see this red Civic sitting behind me. So that's how that works right there. So I just wanted you to be able to see my backup camera and how it works and that you might not need parking sensors if you're thinking, well, my last car had them or it's something I've wanted. So that's what's going on from that standpoint. Uh, so let's move back into park and go over a couple other things. <coughs> okay. So from the home button, first thing I wanna show you is audio-wise what your options are. So from here, I'm gonna to jump to source and just show you. I've got FM, I've got AM, I've got 90 days of satellite radio. I do have USBs down there that I can plug into. Um, as far as USBs, I will show you where they're at. Let me flip them down so you can see the um, 
labels too. So I got two of them down here in the center console. The one with the phone on it is gonna give you access to Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So that's the one you wanna plug your USB in. The other one is just gonna be like, you could plug a thumb drive in and upload uh, pictures. You could upload songs if you wanna be able to listen to music that way or just charge your phone, right? And then I have a power outlet over there and then moving out, I have another power outlet right here. So just so I go over that. Now, wirelessly, you can listen to your music via Bluetooth, better to be something saved off your phone or streaming. It is Pandora compatible. Uh, through Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you have access to Spotify, Pandora, iHeartMedia, uh, I mean, any, any of those things you want to stream. So just be aware that you have a lot of options here for audio. Uh, so the only thing you don't have is a CD player. Uh, now, moving down one screen, the info button. So this is going to give you access to your tripometer information. Um, so I'll touch this real quick and show you. And that's the same info I had going on over here. It's just presented to you a little bit differently. So my range is how many miles I'm with this tank of gas, what my current miles per gallon is on my previous trip. Uh, if I had multiple trips, I would be able to see the rest of that here. Now, I can go to a screensaver from that view too. Uh, so from info, I could go and you'll see when it pulls that up, clock and wallpaper. And I can load my own wallpaper here. And you would just follow here, go through the settings and add it. And that would just be putting a JPEG or a PNG file on a, a USB. It's not hard to do. If you need help, just let me know. Uh, so let's jump back out of that. All right, Honda Link. So Honda Link is set up to where you can create your own, uh, it's an app you download, you create your own uh, profile, uh, and they'll give you uh, access to things like maintenance reminders, recall notices, depending on the level of a car you're in, so depending on what Honda it may be too, uh, you have access to things like being able to remote start your car or do the door locks uh, from your phone. I, I recently learned some of the cars that you can't actually put your keys in the car and be able to lock it from your phone, which is nice if you're going to go running or do something like that. So it is a little bit different from just you know being able to lock the keys in the car, which you can't do with the key fobs because it'll open the door. So there is a way to do it if you want to be able to. So just kind of news to me. Uh, Bluetooth. Once I've connected to a phone, if you've never connected a phone, you can touch that and it'll start you through the prompts and say, would you like to add a phone? Yes. And then continue once your Bluetooth is on. Now, if you need to add a secondary phone, how to do so, you'll go to settings. From here, we're going to go to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And then we're going to go to the device list because we want to add something to that list. Now, from there, add Bluetooth device down here at the bottom. And it's going to start you with a prompt. Make sure your Bluetooth is on and then it'll connect up. So that's how to add a secondary phone. And you can add up to eight phones to a vehicle. Uh, now settings wise, there's a couple things that I wanna show you in here. So uh, as far as the cameras, guidelines, if you wanna turn them on and off, uh, that, that would be where you go to do that. Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, you just saw what I use that for. If you need to adjust the clock, it's that easy to get to. Phone, if you wanted to go in and mess with speed dials, that's where you would go to. What I'm currently wanting to show you though is under vehicle. So this is where door lock setup, window lock setup, uh, walk away auto lock features are and things like that. So I just want you to know about some of these features. Uh, so the keyless access setup right now is set up to where like, uh, like for a door unlock mode, if I put my hand on my, my driver's side door, it's just going to unlock that one door. Or if I click the fob once, that's the way this is set up. That's just the default. You can set it to all doors if you want. Most people just like it that way. So let's back out of that screen for one quick second. I want to go to door and window though. Door and window's got a couple ones. So uh, auto door lock, this is just set up right now when you hit 10 miles an hour to automatically lock your doors. If you want to turn that off or change it to shifting it to park, that's where you would do so. Unlocking the doors. So right now it's set up when you unlock your and open your driver's side door, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. This is where you could change those options. So this is stuff I'd go over in a personalized settings worksheet if you're buying a car from me. Now walk away auto lock features right here. What this feature is, is if I turn it on, which I'm going to turn it on because I think it's a great feature. Uh, now, if I get out of the car and I get 10 feet from it, it'll automatically lock the doors for me. Uh, so that's what the walkway auto lock feature is. That way you don't have to get halfway to the grocery store and wonder, uh, did I lock it? Let me go back out and make sure because my laptop's in the back of the car or something, right? So that's a good feature if you're one of those people who's concerned you might not always remember to lock your doors. So these are just some different features in here and under the vehicle settings. Uh, and there's some other stuff you can play with too, but just, those are some of the big key points I like to point out to everybody. Uh, so smartphone connection, this is what I was talking about earlier. If you have an Apple phone and you plug into that USB that I pointed out, which is the one with the phone on it down there, uh, or I mean, either phone's going to have to plug, whether it be Android based or Apple. Now, if you have an Android phone, you're going to need to download the Android auto app, which is free, but remember you need to download it. If you're an Apple user, you don't, it's just going to automatically pull up. Now, when you connect up for the first time, it's going to connect your phone to Bluetooth. Uh, so it's going to be a little bit, it's going to walk you through some prompts, but it'll connect up. But when this highlights and finally says Apple CarPlay or Android auto, then you know, you're ready to go and you'll be able to select it and it'll pull up and you'll recognize the screen. It'll look like your Apple based, uh, home screen or it'll look like, uh, an Android based, you know, the home screen, you'll see some cards and stuff. It'll start looking real familiar to you. So that's just how this works. Uh, now moving down your climate control. So you can pull it up on the touchscreen if you want and see everything's right here. Uh, but if you just need to make adjustments while you're driving, I mean, you have the temperature gauges right here. If I adjust these, you'll notice up here, you can see the numbers changing. So I have them synced right now to where both are changing at the same time. If I want to unsync them down here, sync and unsync. So if it's lit up green, it's synced. <coughs> in doing so, 
Now I can change the temperature on one side and leave the temperature on the other side. So that's just how that works. So I'm gonna sync them back, right? So adjusting the fan speed is right here and then where I want the air to go and defrost and stuff like that. I don't think I need to explain those too much. Anybody can understand AC, I think. Now heated seats are right here. So they're below on both sides. And I've got three different settings I can set them on. So today it's not that cold, so I'm not gonna turn those on, but that's where they are. And they do come in the EX model. Uh, my shifter is pretty standard setup, park, reverse, neutral drive, uh, secondary, and a lower gear. So it's just, you can figure it out. Uh, now, a couple of these features you might not know about, like brake hold. So to, to use brake hold, you have to have your, your seatbelt on first. So this is going to come in handy. And the reason I tell you about your seatbelt is that some people would want to use this in drive through So if I turn this button on, you're going to see brake hold standby, right? So now what it's set up to do is if I'm in drive and I'm driving somewhere and I come to, you know, I come up to the light and I stop, which I've just done, I've moved the car a little bit and I now have it still in drive and I have my foot on the brake with brake hold on, I'm able to release my foot off the brake, leave the car and drive and we're not moving. And then when traffic picks up again, I move the six feet that I can, I come to another complete stop, same thing, complete stop, I can let my foot off the brake, still in drive, we're not moving. Uh, this works good for drive throughs too, like if you're at the bank drive through um, or if you're, you know what I mean, at a fast food place or anything like that, that's where this can come into play too, but you gotta have your seatbelt on, that's why I bring that up in case you're in a drive through right? Because a lot of people will take their drive uh, their uh, seatbelt off when they're at the bank or something if they can't reach the, uh, the tube when they're trying to get to it. So that's the only reason I point that out. So that's how that feature works. Now your parking brake is above that. Parking brake is electronic. So to set it, I put my foot on the brake, I pull up on the trigger and it sets. When I do so, you're gonna see brake come on up here in red. And then to release it, I put my foot on the brake, I press down on the trigger, it releases it. And you'll be able to hear it if you don't have the music real loud. Uh, and you can feel it under the brake pedal. You can, hear, you can feel it engage and disengage. So that's how your parking brake works. Now moving over to Econ button. Anytime I turn this button on, you'll see a green leaf pop on up there. So you can see it popping on and off. Uh, and it'll remain on up there. Uh, econ button will improve the gas mileage of the car. In doing so, it's gonna shut down some of the electrical systems affecting things like your AC unit and your accelerator. What that means to you is that if I have it on, uh, the AC thing you won't notice that much, to be honest, and, and I live in Texas where it gets up in the hundreds, but the accelerator you will notice, it just means it's gonna take away some of that get up and go. Uh, so if you're a little bit heavy-footed driver, you know, you're a little, little bit more one of the get up and go constantly, then leave it off until you get up to highway speeds and then turn it on, and then get that improved gas mileage. If you're a more conservative driver, you'll probably never notice the difference. Turn it on, leave it on, and just get better gas mileage. Now the question after this usually comes, well, how much better gas mileage? And the answer to that is it's relative to the driver. You know, if you're more conservative, can you get an extra three, four or five miles per gallon out of it? Yeah, absolutely, you can. If you're a little bit more heavy footed, don't know that you're gonna see a whole lot of results just because the way you're driving is gonna affect your driving in a negative way anyways, right? Now related to that, I will point out one other thing which I can't show you right now, but you'll see there's a white LED right up here above uh, the tachometer. When you're driving, that's gonna light up green or it's gonna fade out to white. If it's lit up green, it means the way you're driving is gonna save you as far as gas mileage goes. When it fades out to white, it means the way you're driving isn't positively affecting your gas mileage. So it's just something to keep an eye on. It's just an interactive way to view your driving and kind of work on it. You can make it a game for yourself if you want, right? So uh, center console. Uh, it does flip up and it does slide forward. So that's what's going on from that standpoint. I do have a shelf system right here uh, so I can cover it up if I want, right? So you can see everything's covered. Or if I wanted more space, I can pop this out, flip it around, put it back down in there. And now I've got a lot of space in case you're one of those people who keeps like a tissue or you want to throw like a small clutch or a bag in there and not have to worry about it flopping around in the seat and rolling around, that kind of thing. So that's what's going on from that standpoint. Um, so just so you can see uh, what is going on and then how I did it to put it back in. It's, this isn't hard, you know, it pops into space and you're good to go. So that, that is what it's moving from that standpoint. Uh, this is a rubber base down here that you can see, uh, which is nice and it does have a tab. So if you get gunk or something on it, you can pull this out and be able to clean it. So if I can get it off, I'll show you. I don't have that long of fingernails. All right, I got it. Um, so you can see, you can get underneath and, and be able to wash it out. So it's just kind of nice because I know every once in a while your soda flips, something happens, and it's nice to be able to wash that out and clean it off if you need to. Um, outside of that, I'll just point out, you know, it, it's a two-tone look to it interior-wise. You can see that it does have the brown uh, wood inlay along the sides. Every single color is going to come with that exact same brown. Uh, the interior of the car is either going to be gray, uh, tan, what this is, or black. But all this that you see, with the exception of where tan is right now, is always going to be the same color. So the wood's the same color. It's the black along the dash and the, the seals of the doors is always going to be black. And the floorboards are going to be black, too. So that way, uh, as far as, like, glare and dirt, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, it is an EX model, so it does have a moonroof to use it. Pull back on the trigger, it'll open it all the way. Uh, if you just want to crack it, press directly up on the trigger, 
and it'll crack it. So you can see, and then I'll just send it back forward to close it. This other switch is from your map lighting. So I, if I want the, uh, like I can flip it once to where it, when I open the doors, the lights come on. So that's what that is. Uh, and then I have a sunglass holder. And then if I need to keep an eye on uh, little ones back there where it'd be kids, grandkids, dogs, I can have this flipped and be able to keep an eye on what's going on in the back. So that is the EX model. Oh, only other thing I did not point out because I always forget this. Uh, the car does have blind spot monitoring in it. Uh, so you'll see right here, there is a logo of a car. Hopefully you can see that right there. Yeah, it'll light up orange uh, if there's somebody sitting in your blind spot. Uh, if there is and you start to try to get over, it'll start to beep at you in the car to alert you. So this car does have a blind spot monitoring system. It is on both mirrors. I just, I never remember to bring that up. Uh, so it does have that. Uh, outside of that audio speaker, as you know, you've got two in the doors, two tweeters up top, two in the back. Uh, and if you move up to the EXL model, it's a little bit higher powered wattage and it does come with a sub. So just so you know what's going on from that standpoint. Uh, so yeah, 2019 Honda uh, CRV EX. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. <coughs> Excuse me. You can always call me at 512-443-4300. My name is Justin Fuller. Uh, you can email me, the letter J, and then fuller at howdyhonda.com. Um, or you can just comment on the YouTube video. I'm usually pretty good about getting back and checking that stuff because it pops up. Uh, outside of that, have a great time. Enjoy your new Honda. If you have questions, reach out to me. All righty.